Happening now, there's a search underway at this time for a shooting suspect in High Point that police consider armed and dangerous. A 45-year-old Nairobi Good is wanted on assault charges. Investigators believe he shot a man in the leg Thursday night on Dorothy Street. We are told the 27-year-old victim is recovering at this time in the hospital. If you know where Nairobi Good is, call High Point Police or High Point Crime Stoppers at 336-889-4000. Also happening now, three people are found dead in a home in Henry County, Virginia. The sheriff's office says that they have made the discovery. They have made that discovery last night during a welfare check. We're told that the victims are one male and two females. An autopsy is being done to try to figure out exactly how they died. Breaking news now in Minneapolis, where Minneapolis police say they have evacuated staff from its third precinct because of this, after protesters entered the building and ignited these fires. This is what the mayor had to say early this morning. The symbolism of a building uh, cannot outweigh the importance of life, of our officers or the public. We could not risk serious injury to anyone. Police say there are no serious injuries. We are now entering day four of protest after George Floyd's death after being handcuffed while in police custody. Minnesota's governor has activated the National Guard to respond. Protests are also reaching other cities as well. This is video from Denver where police there used tear gas to disperse protesters as you see here. Crowds eventually made their way in onto a highway during those protests in Denver, shutting down many highways for an extended period of time. The North Carolina Chiefs of Police is now responding to George Floyd's death. In a statement, they say that they support the firing of the four officers involved. The group goes on to say that Floyd's death is deeply disturbing and says the officers, quote, displayed an absence of a very basic sense of compassion and empathy for the life of Mr. George Floyd. They add it is important for officers to be held accountable for the standard of fair treatment, dignity, and respect toward all individuals they encounter. Sheriff Bobby Kimbrough from Forsyth County, as well as Winston-Salem Police Chief Katrina Thompson, will hold a joint press conference today live on the Forsyth County Sheriff's Facebook page to voice their concerns that begins at 1230. Breaking news now on the coronavirus. We started with one person, and that has now increased to more than 26,000 cases of COVID-19 in North Carolina. The state health department says that 784 more people have tested positive just today. However, not all of those people are still sick. Close to 15,000 have recovered. Good news there. Unfortunately, 827 people have passed away from this highly contagious virus. So getting tests for everyone who needs one is a very big goal for state health leaders. Some big companies are now ready to help. CVS, for example, is announcing plans to open 55 drive through testing sites across the state today. Stores in Asheboro, Burlington, Greensboro, and Winston-Salem are on that list. And you can find a complete list on our website. Just click on the story on our homepage. The Union County School Board voted to hold in-person high school graduations that could violate the governor's executive order banning large gatherings altogether. The district plans to hold the ceremonies in an outdoor stadium where students and limited family members would maintain social distancing. Masks would also have to be worn by everyone. No dates were approved at this time. High Point University will start its fall semester one week early due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A live look now over campus this afternoon. High Point University says students will move in between August 13th and 17th. They will have to complete an online health pre-screening before arriving on campus and classes will begin Tuesday, August 18th. There will be no fall break and classes will end Tuesday, November 24th. Students will return home for the reading days and exams will be taken online during the first two weeks of December. Today, the North Carolina Bars and Taverns Association could file a lawsuit against Governor Roy Cooper if he vetoes a bill to partially reopen their businesses. The measure passed the House and Senate on Thursday. Bars could only serve outdoors, either in existing patio areas or in temporary spaces. Restaurants would be allowed to set up temporary outdoor serving spaces, and the bill would also remove authority of the governor or any local leader to close restaurants and bars 
shuts down again for at least five months. That's even if the coronavirus outbreak becomes even more widespread. And I'm going to ask our businesses to show, prove us, prove it to us that you appreciate what we're doing. Now, I know that it is a tough time for business. And I believe that there will be a time when we can open bars, but that time is not now. The governor went on to say that he is unlikely to sign this type of legislation. Also today, Governor Roy Cooper's office says that they will respond to a letter from the Republican National Committee. The letter lists requirements from the committee that they say need to be in place to hold an in-person convention in Charlotte this August. Some of those requirements are pre-travel health surveys, daily health questionnaires delivered through an app, and thermal scans of all attendees. Crowd limitations and mass requirements were not mentioned. RNC Chairwoman Ronnie McDaniel was asked, has asked the governor to make any additional requests by Wednesday. A couple of days ago, President Donald Trump threatened to pull the convention from the Queen City altogether if attendance was not allowed in its entirety, full attendance. The RNC is set to run from August 24th through the 27th.